Hey y'all, it's Monica the Natural Hair Eclectic. I don't know how I'm looking right now because I'm outside sweating and working in my garden trying to cut the grass and whatnot, losing my earbuds. Here to give you the weekend garden update because I didn't get it up this last weekend and I know y'all was missing it and we have some exciting new things going on in the garden. So let's start outside and see what's going on. Okay, y'all, this is Iris the second. This is the second Iris plant that I transplanted from my parents' backyard. And as you can see, you guys have seen in other videos, as you can see, they're doing really well. Um, when you first transplant them, you know, it takes them a time, some time to get their roots established, but once their roots are established, you know, they're good. So, she's looking good. And my compost pile. Now, I keep forgetting to turn this thing over. And that's why I have grass and things growing in my compost pile. I don't know if I need to just start another one all the way over. Or if I can, you know, work with this. Green stuff is good in your compost pile. So, I'll have to see. But that's what that was supposed to be. But sadly, it has been neglected. Now, this is one of my great updates. This is like the joy of gardening right here. When you plant something in the ground and you water it and you fertilize it and you take care of it to make, to make sure it grows. And then, you know, it takes time for it to deliver its results. But one day you just look up and it's like, wow, my plant is growing fruit. And as you can see, I've got a tomato on my tomato plant starting to grow. So, that's awesome. Here's our potato quartet that all this started with was some oversprouted potatoes that my dad had in his house. He planted some, I planted some, and they're looking really good. Starting, well, we do have some issues with something eating the leaves. Somebody said to try cayenne pepper. Y'all saw me sprinkle that the last time. I think I'm going to try some more. The thing about it is you have to keep applying it. But um, you can see that they're starting to die off a little bit. So I think they're almost mature. Maybe another month or so, they'll be ready to harvest. Behind them, ooh, I know y'all can see these are the first onions that i planted and you can see that they're the last video they hadn't started forming bulbs yet but these are starting to form bulbs so i'm gonna get what's that four onions out of this set there was a third one planted over here but that one rotted it didn't quite um make it through its growth cycle so that's okay i put it in the compost pile and kept it moving but these are looking good um i'm hoping that they're going to grow larger as you can see these are white onions that i planted over here but they're looking really good so i'm happy about that um that's my lavender plant back here um i showed you guys how i made that container from some wood that my dad had at his house and I will attest that deadheading your plants, which is just cutting off the tops when they start to die, works because I've cut off of this a couple of times and hung them out uh, in my closet to dry so that I can eventually have enough to make a small little bottle of um, lavender oil. And they just keep going back and I still have plenty of buds as you can see. So she's looking good. Now, her next door neighbor is my garlic. Now, the garlic you don't see, it doesn't grow above ground like the onion I discovered. But as you can see from where we started, they're really healthy. They're really growing well. They're starting to brown on the ends. I'm thinking like maybe soon they might be ready to harvest. I'm not sure if that's it getting too much water from the rain cycle or if it's you know getting closer to time just because the foliage and everything is looking good so um it's pretty mature so we'll see now the garlic 
next to it is Iris the First, which is the first, um, oh, yeah, well, there was <laughs> another um, piece of an Iris that came off that was over here, but I have either ran over it with the lawnmower or it just didn't survive, so, oh, well. This is the first iris plant that I moved from my parents' house. And as you can see, it's it's sturdy, it's firm in there. It's finally got its rooting right. We got a rhizome sitting on top there, which is the way it's supposed to be. So it's looking good. I found out, you know, irises, they make perfume with um, iris flowers but it is actually i thought it was the actual which i probably won't get flowers out of these this summer but i thought it was the flowers but it's actually this little bulb the rhizome or the root ball this is where all of the um scent is coming on when they make what's called orris powder and all that pretty cool so maybe that's something that i'll do in the future not maybe i probably will now this is another part of that what i did was i planted both pieces of that first transplant right next to each other so what happened was i planted both of the pieces of the first transplant right next to each other and you're not supposed to plant them that close together and it caused me some problems so i eventually had to move one over i actually just accidentally cut a piece of the fan off of um, this one but it's still looking good and it's in there pretty sturdy now as well so let's go on up the hill and see the new garden okay so these are supposed to be wildflowers growing here but what I discovered is that it's a part of this new section that doesn't get light as much as the others. So it has been really slow growing. Over here, this is a cucumber vine and it's flowering, but it's got some issues here as well. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with that trying to decide if I need to get a stake or a trellis or something um, for it to grow on. But I'll figure that out once it starts really going. My next pride and joy, my bell pepper plant, even though it's really small. One thing I discovered about bell peppers, I discovered about tomato and bell pepper plants is what I was trying to say is that it's not good when they make fruit early and you can see that my plant is really small and it's growing bell peppers really a little bit too early but it does look good i'm not even gonna lie i would pick that and eat it right now and you can pick them and eat them at any point in the growth cycle but i do want to see if it's going to get a little bit bigger and actually i don't see any more growing so they say if your bell pepper or tomato plants start flowering or fruiting early that you need to pinch those off um, because you want it to grow as tall and get as much foliage as it possibly can. So it's putting all of its energy into becoming a mature plant before it starts fruiting and flowering right. So I don't know how this is going to go. Um, one of the problem, uh, problems I read about with that is that if the soil isn't um, nutrient uh, rich enough with compost and all of that amended very well so I probably didn't do that very well beginner gardener mistakes but it's all good I'll know for next season and while I'm over here her next door neighbors this is the second set of onions that I planted these have been planted fairly recently and I need to get some soil to kind of cover up that part right there I'll see if I can move something over you can tell these were and you can tell if I can yeah you can tell these I grew from cuttings and I'll show you I'll put a clip in 
this video of some some more cuttings that I'm growing right now so you can see the different stages of growth. But so it looks like these, I'm not sure what I'm gonna get yet, but we'll see. And up here are my sunflowers. This one led the pack and then I have one down here and some more down there that are starting to catch up. And then I succession planted these, which just means like planting a row every two or three weeks or so because of their growth and uh, cycle, then they die off. So you have new plants coming in when the old ones dying off. Um, and those are little bitty trying to come up. But um, this one is growing the best. I guess it's getting the best sun. And so hopefully in another month or so, it'll be up there. We'll be able to see that gorgeous yellow flower and it'll be beautiful. So let's take a trip over to the corner. I planted some canna lilies over here. These, yeah, you can guess where I got them from. I snagged them from my parents' house. But they were a little droopy at first. They had a little bit of transplant shock. But you know, canna lilies are pretty resilient. So they're back up there growing well. So we'll see what they do. So that's all the stuff that's outside, except for some things that I'm growing. Let's go up there and take a look at that. Okay, so this is, I think, gonna be, this is a cutting that I took off of something, but I don't think that's gonna be successful. That looks like it's dying. So we'll see, I'll try to water it, fertilize it, and see if I can bring it back to life. This is the, wildflower mix that I showed you down in the garden because those weren't coming up I decided to just put some um, random seeds into this repurposed um, plastic container and see what I could get to come up and it needs to be watered too the only thing I've got is I don't even know if you can see it but I've got one plant out of all the seeds that I put in here coming up. Um, as I walk through to get to the mailbox, to the marigolds, I figured we take a step inside and see how the succulents are doing. That's big Vera, honey. And that's little noble right there. Um, this is an aloe nobilis, I believe. Possibly could be an aloe mitre, honey. I don't know, but it's still pretty. I'm liking it. It's growing on me. That's big Vera. Vera's got some babies growing off of her. If anybody is wanting the aloe vera plant, let me know because um, it's got a while. I have to let it get a little bit bigger before I repot it. Detach it from Vera and repot it. But yeah, Vera has been wonderful to have around because I have clipped off some of her leaves and used it for the organic gel inside. And it is great on your skin. It is great in your hair, body products so get your aloe vera plant also good for burns people out there if you get some burns or you burn yourself on the stove cooking like i done done a couple of times it is great and awesome to have all right we're gonna go outside the front door and check out the marigolds going by the mailbox okay y'all so we made it back to the mailbox me and the marigolds which are having a strange time this is the first one that I planted. I just sowed the seed directly into the ground and it actually is growing well. Um, you can see that I made four plots around the mailbox um, for them to grow out of, but I don't know what the hell I did with the other ones. If I cut them or pulled them by mistake when they were small, I don't know, but those didn't do their thing. But this one is, so it's gonna be real weird because we're gonna have this one mature plant and these little bitty seedlings over here. So last week, I just went ahead and put some more in the ground just because I had some extra seeds and it's hot. So I felt like, well, maybe they'll grow well. So I did that. So we have some new seedlings coming up. You see, we anyway, 
I thank y'all so much for tuning into my channel. It feels really good to be outside today. It is so sunny. It's such a beautiful day. So if you have the opportunity, make sure that you get outside, get some sun, get some exercise, have a good time. And I encourage you as always to grow a garden. There are so many benefits from growing things with your own hands. But anyway, y'all, I am so tired. So I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll catch up to y'all next time. Bye, y'all.